following program is sponsored. The opinions and statements made by the hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect the views of WBOB or its parent company, the Chesapeake Portsmouth Broadcasting Corporation. WBOB AM 600 The Answer is proud to present Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Help is on the air with Tula Wooten, your source to go for resources and information to help you in this rewarding but sometimes challenging role. To participate in today's show, call 904-222-TALK. That's 904-222-8255. Now here's Tula. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. I am so delighted to be with you guys this morning. To my listening audience in Northeast Florida and to my listening audience everywhere, as my show is now available online digitally. For anybody who might be listening for the first time, my name is Tula Wooten. I've been coming to you live every Saturday since the summer of 2009 when this show first kicked off, and it has been a joy and a blessing For me to come here every Saturday to help caregivers, particularly those caregivers who are caring for a loved one who is a frail elder. I'm one of those. I'm one of the 66 million caregivers in the United States. I take care of both of my parents. Um, I have a sweet father who's 84 years old and a very sweet mother who's 82. And I am their primary caregiver and have been for a few years now. So I'm right there with you. And I know what some of the challenges are and what some of the joys can be of taking care of a loved one because it's not all just difficult but it does have its its tough moments and um, that's why I've been with you for about seven years now on Saturday mornings to help those of you in the United States and elsewhere really who are taking care of a loved one who's a frail elder my background is medical social work I've always worked with seniors or elders and therefore of course their family caregivers and it's been a joy to do that i do have some new news today this is my last live show on wbob this physical station wbob um as i said it's been about seven years now and you know when i first started this show i turned it over to the lord because i really felt like the lord was telling me to do it and this has been his show since day one and i've always said i wanted the this show to bring honor and glory to him as i try to serve those of you who are taking care of a loved one but i've also always said if i ever felt like it was time to stop lord i would listen so this is my last show on wbob i'll be taking my show to a digital format uh, which i'll be glad to tell you guys a little bit more about in a minute but in the interim I would like to welcome Joyce Cruz to the show. Joyce, thank you for calling in today. Well, I wouldn't miss it, Tula. Well, I'm really happy that you're here. And, you know, I invited you to be on the show today because a lot of my listeners don't know the story of how this show really got started. And, you know, it was something you felt the Lord calling you to do in your prayer time in the beginning of summer of 2009. And you reached out to me because you'd never done a show before. For that matter, neither had I. Um, (laughs) But I had been leading the Caregiver Coalition of Northeast Florida for a little while by then and had a number of great speakers at my fingertips accessible to come and speak on a variety of topics. And so you and I just worked it out that summer, didn't we? Well, I tell you, it was the Lord all the way and... Uh, when we met for lunch, um, the whole thing was just put into place, and uh, I'm just so proud of you and how you have carried on with this wonderful program that is so helpful to caregivers, which I have been one for several years, yep. uh, and I know you have too. So I really am so grateful to you and for your persistence in doing this because i don't know how you've done it with a full-time job and all your caregiver conferences and everything else and so thank you so much and uh, i pray that your continued involvement with uh, getting out the word to caregivers to take care of themselves and to how to do that uh, will uh, be followed by your technology that I'm not sure I will be able to figure it out, but I'm sure that you will explain it to your listeners and they will be able to continue and hear all the good 
word that you have for each one from all of your fabulous experience. And I just want to continue to encourage you and thank you and thank the Lord for blessing you with the stamina for doing this. Thank you, Tula. Well, thank you, Joyce, for those kind words. And again, you know, it was in your prayer time that you felt the Lord telling you to reach out to caregivers through the airwaves. And we came here together and started that in 2009. And talk about stamina. You were taking care of both your husband and your 93-year-old father with Alzheimer's at the same time in your home. And for those of you who don't know Joyce, she's a petite little thing, and she had her hands full taking care of both of them and she just really felt impressed that if she was struggling and she you had some resources at your fingertips but if you were struggling just think about how other people were were struggling so we came here together and we called it help is on the air and that has been my tagline for tula's tips for caregivers ever since help is on the air and I just want to commend you. What a wonderful job you did in taking care of both of them. And then I know you've been a caregiver for your mother for quite some time. And I she's hope 102. You, she's 102 <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I realized that, Joyce. Wow. You know, we've got some longevity here in the United States. People are living longer. And, you know, her longevity is obviously um, a testimony to her good genes and her health, but also the great care you've been giving her. Well, she's she's a sweetheart, so it's been great. I, I admire you. That it, 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 As we both know, it's not an easy road, but um, we're going to keep trucking, and we're going to keep on caring for caregivers. I know you're t- continuing to take care of your mom, and I, of course, will continue doing this in another format, and I'll be more than happy to come over and show you how to do to do that it's really not hard um we're going to be sending out email blasts um every week get with links telling people how that they can um click a link it's going to be that simple click a link and be able to listen to the show um that and it'll also be on facebook and a couple of digital radio podcast formats that we've been working on so i'm not going away really i'm just taking a different format you know we did the survey and we sent out a survey to quite a number of my listeners just to see how do people listen do you listen on a device do you listen on the radio and it seems like from listening you know to the results of the survey more and more people are going to their phones now and to their ipads and to their computers rather than listening just on a physical station and the beauty of that is You don't have to be tied to your radio from 11 to 12 on Saturdays um, Mm -hmm. to hear me. You can listen at any time, you know, at your convenience. So that's my goal is to um, make it more convenient and therefore be able to reach more people. That's great. I applaud you for doing that. Well, you're the best. And, you know, I get to see you every Sunday. So I hope I get to see you tomorrow and... um, give you a hug and again thank you for just you know listening to the lord and coming here and kicking this off we've we started it together and i'm winding it up today so i really do appreciate you taking the time to be my special guest today um and call in well love you much have a blessed day love you too and i'll look for you tomorrow okay all right blessings Mm -hmm. bye-bye bye-bye Folks, that was Joyce Cruz, and again, um, it was in her prayer time that she heard the Lord say, let's reach out to caregivers and find ways to help them, because if you've never been a caregiver, hang on, you're going to be. You know, Rosalind Carter, who started the Caregiver Institute back about 35 years ago, came up with the phrase, um, there are only four types of people in this world, those who are a caregiver, those who've been a caregiver, those who are going to be a caregiver, and those who need care. If you are over the age of 45 and you haven't been a caregiver yet, like I said, hang on, your time's coming. You're listening to Tula's Tips for Caregivers on AM 600 WBOB. We'll be right back after this break. Tula's Tips for Caregivers is proudly sponsored by Agewell Institute at Baptist Health, by the AARP, by Elmcroft Assisted Living and Memory Care, and by Claim Medic. 
Are you burdened with a loved one's medical bills and confused about who and how much to pay? Are there medical claims that have been denied? When you work with Claim Medic, they review your bills for accuracy every month and deal directly with your insurance company to make sure you receive every benefit that you pay for and never pay a bill that you don't owe. At Claim Medic, they offer free audits of up to three years of past medical bills to identify any past billing errors and recover overpayments you may have made. And their monthly bill review service will ensure that future bills are accurate before you pay. With Claim Medic as your personal medical claim specialist, you can focus on what matters most, the health and comfort of your loved one, and rest easy knowing that their medical bills are managed by experts who care. Ready to start? Call 888-988-2985 to speak with a specialist or visit ClaimMedic.com. That's 888-988-2985. With Claim Medic on your side, you'll never pay a medical bill you don't owe. Hi, this is Tula, and I'm here to talk to you about Baptist New Age Well Institute. Are you caring for a loved one who's 65 or older? Are you a boomer like myself who's caring for a parent? And perhaps your parent has been experiencing some decline in their overall health. Let me highly recommend to you the Baptist Age Well Institute. They have the only real geriatrician here in Northeast Florida who is able to look at the whole person. Their comprehensive approach includes a nurse, a doctor, a social worker, a pharmacist, a dietitian. They have their own physical therapy there. They can work with folks with memory disorders. My goal is to help you, the caregiver, find an organization that can care for your loved one who's 65 or older. I take my own parents there and I highly recommend the Agewell Institute at Baptist. Please give them a call at 904-202-4243. Again, that's 904-202-4243. You'll be so glad you did. George, I got the job. Thanks, I'm so excited. They hired me on the spot right after the interview. It was that book I bought from Amazon, From the Interview to the Paycheck by Fred Haley. The book really taught me something. It helped me to think about what the boss wants. Then it helped me with answers that show that I can do the job. I can tell they were impressed when I introduced myself. I just followed the simple outline from the interview to the paycheck book. And I know I won the job with my first 90 days plan the book recommended. They said no one else had ever been so prepared. You should get the book. It's on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle. It's worth it if you want to get hired. Just search for From the Interview to the Paycheck by Fred Haley. Do it now. Have you read the new book, Love Stories and Timeless Tips, yet? It's by our own Tula Wooten with Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Tula is a caregiver, too, as well as an expert on caregiving. You can get it in paperback or on Kindle at Amazon.com. The book is filled with touching stories of caregivers taking care of their loved ones. Each chapter has helpful ideas that we all can use. I love that Tula included a Tula's tip with each story. Her message to caregivers is clear. Take care of yourself so that you can take care of your loved one. This is a beautiful book for all caregivers to read, whether you're a part-time, full-time, or long-distance caregiver, or someone receiving care. You should get the book today. Just go to Amazon. Com. Search for Love Stories and Timeless Tips by Tula Wooten. And now let's return to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Once again, here's Tula. Well, welcome back, everyone. This is Tula's Tula Wooten. That's my name. I can say it on a good day. I am here talking to caregivers across the nation, really. Caregivers, particularly who are taking care of an elder, a mother, a father, an aunt, an uncle, someone over the age of 65, 70, and you are their primary or secondary caregiver for that matter. It's a tough job, and my show since 2009 has been focused on you, on trying to take care of you, on trying to help you access resources to help you make the job a little bit easier because there are resources out there to help you. It's just that most people don't know about them, and as I like to say, don't really prepare to be a caregiver I have a friend who says you have about nine months to prepare to have a baby and about nine seconds to be prepared to be a caregiver, which is really about how it happens. Your loved one is admitted to the hospital, and when it's time for them to go home, a discharge planner or a social worker from the hospital calls you and says, guess what? They can't return home the way they were. You've got to take them home and take care of them or place them somewhere, and your your world just turns upside down at that moment and you need help 
So that's why I've been here every Saturday since the summer of 2009. And uh, my big announcement today is that this is my last actual live show on a physical station. From here on out, I'm going to be doing podcasts on a number of different platforms. I'm going to be starting with Spreaker, which will automatically upload my show to Facebook and to my own web page. I've not been real good about giving out my own website throughout the course of the show, so let me take a minute and do that now. My website does host all of my shows since March of 2010 is when I started recording them. For those of you who know anything about websites, it's got a big bandwidth because all of these shows are an hour long. So you can go to TulasTipsForCaregivers.com, T-O-U-L-A-S, TipsForCaregivers.com, and listen to one of the many shows that I have on my site. I have topics from medication management to how to take away the keys, how to have that tough conversation, how to take care of yourself, elder law um, conversations, the importance of getting the documents you need in place. I have every topic really related to caregiving that you could imagine with a focus on please take care of yourself. That's been my main message for the seven years that I've been live on the air, and I know it's easier said than done. For those of you who know me personally, you know that I had a pretty tough year in 2015 taking care of my own parents. And there were a couple of hospitalizations and a couple of transitions into assisted living and in and out of nursing home. And now I'm happy to tell you that they are both stable in a good place where they're getting the care that they need. But it took a lot in 2015 to get them there. And it took a lot out of me. And even while I've been doing this for seven years, telling you to take care of yourself, I found out firsthand that that's a whole lot easier said than done. Because when you love your loved one, you automatically put them first. You automatically want to make sure that they have everything that they need. And when you're a working caregiver like I am, and you've taken your parents back and forth to the doctor and to x-rays and other medical appointments... You start thinking, oh, gee, I better not take any more time for myself to go to the doctor. Can't take off any more time from work. That's detrimental. That'll be harmful to my job. So I had a a really tough 2015, but I'm really thankful to say that I caught up in 2016. I understood what I did to myself and made up for all of those medical appointments and truly have put myself at the top of my to-do list. Sounds kind of selfish, I know. But if you don't put yourself at the top of your list, you're not going to make it. So, Chris, I've got you on the line. And, Joni, I've got you on the line. I'm going to try to bring you both on at the well, same hi. time. Hi, Joni. Hi, Tula. It's so good to hear your voice. And, Chris, are you there, too? I'm here. It's nice to be with my two sisters. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Those of you who know me, and you two do, you know you can still hear a frog in my throat. I've had a bad cold for about the, the past week, but I'm on the upside of it now. Um, thank you guys for calling in. This is my last show on this actual physical station. I'm really kind of going through withdrawal. It's kind of hard to tell you the truth. I bet it is. I really bet it is. And, you know, stress might have been causing you to have a little bit of a cold because you know how that can work. But, yeah. Um, I, know it's, it, I know it's bittersweet, but you're doing something that you need to do for yourself, Tula. I think that's a very important message to your listeners. Yeah, it, that is really a, a big part of the motivation. You know, I, again, I've been doing this since summer of 2009, and... To work full-time and take care of both parents and to come here and and have a show prepared every Saturday and have great guests like you. And, again, also to raise the money through sponsorships because it's expensive to have a radio show. And, you know, I've got wonderful sponsors that I'm so thankful for, and I'm going to keep that relationship with them. But it's, it's, you know, it's just time to step back and and put me first and spend a little bit more time on self-care and take the show into a different format. So that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. 
absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, you and Fred, too, don't forget. You know, you didn't <laughs> mention him, but he's pretty darned important as well. And, um, yeah. you know, that's, uh, I know he's a big helpmate for you. So, um, but I'm, I'm sure Chris will agree that, uh, you know, we, we know that it's, it's interesting. Once we become advocates and once we know our message in life, we'll always do this. Well, it'll just be a different platform. That's a good way of putting it, Joni, because I will always do this. Um, the, the importance of advocating for caregivers is still something I'm very passionate about. And we'll continue to be. It's just going to be in a different format. And, Joni, you're right. You know, i got to give big kudos and shout out to my wonderful husband, Fred. I should have done that at the top of the show. Really, he's been my rock for the last three years that we've been married and has been a wonderful assistance and help in helping me make this show happen. So thank you, Fred. I know you're out there. I know you're listening. Um, thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the email blasts you've written over the last three or four years and helping me get the word out. And it's just going to be a different platform. Chris, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, first of all, Tula, I want to congratulate you for taking care of yourself. I mean, this is, uh, I'm looking at this more as uh, you're kind of doing some respite. You know, this is about wellness and longevity and change is difficult, but, uh, you know, you're taking care of yourself. So I think I think your listeners uh, would appreciate that, that you're being mindful about what's what's good for you, too, because as caregivers, we kind of forget about that. We, forgot, we forget about us. And uh, so I commend you for taking the risk and doing it. And, and you know, going, going digital, it, uh, you know, it, it's, where, it's where all this communication is going. So I'm happy to, to share and be a part in this in, in any way that I, that I can. Well, we're going to do this together, and Joni, we're going to loop you in, too, as we've already had some brief discussions on. You know, we're going to be doing some partnering as um, the three of us are radio show hosts for caregivers, with each with a little bit of a different twist, a little bit of a different um, format, if you will. We both got our, each of us have our own kind of subject matter expertise, if you will. Um, Joni, you've de- dedicated so much time to those who are caring for a loved one with cancer, and I applaud you for that um, tough, really tough um, thing to do, as you well know. I do, and it, it is such an important topic and getting harder all the time, too, Tula, because, you know, the treatments are getting so specialized, and a lot more of it is being done at home. So, yes, cancer is definitely an area that we we all need to, to focus in on to um help the caregivers there it's a it's it's a it's a tough road yeah it really is and you know as we talk about being a caregiver you just mentioned uh, so much of it being done at home you know i do a lot of studying on this and i and i write for the caregiver coalition of northeast florida that i lead and you and i and, and chris i know you have too have read all the aarp reports and national alliance for caregiving reports that came out last year that said you know, of all of us who are caring for a frail elder, 60% of us now are bringing our loved ones home doing what they call medical surgical tasks, medical nursing tasks, things that only right. clinicians used to do. Along with all the activities of daily living, like helping them, your loved one get dressed and bathed and groomed and eat and back and forth to the doctor, more and more people now are bringing their loved ones home and taking care of IVs and injections and wound care who's ready for that so <laughs> oh, i i had to do it with gordon and i i imagine that chris probably had to do it with richard as well but yeah we had infusers at home that had to be given in many cases around the clock after a stem cell transplant and i i, I tula if you got time for a quick funny story i'll never forget the first day that that nurse handed me that bag of infusers and i looked at her i said what do you want me to do with these yeah, that's exactly what i would have done <laughs> you know i mean i i was like because i was under the impression that they were going to do all that they were the specialists and and i just looked at her i said you know uh okay let's step back a little bit and oh man it was crazy Okay, guys, hold on, because I want to comment on that when we get back. We're getting ready to go into our commercial break, but you two don't go away, okay? We've got some more discussion to be had. We've been listening to Tula's Tips for Caregivers on AM600. We'll be right back.
With SRN News, I'm Bob Agnew in Washington. Retailers say that sales are just a bit slow this year. Right now, as for the exact date of the year, they're actually running a little bit behind last year's uh, rate of sales growth they saw. So far, it's been up about 2% for the month. Last year at this time, they were seeing a rise of about 2.4% compared to the year before. A celebration of John Glenn's life play, uh, takes place in Columbus, Ohio. Vice President Joe Biden among those expected for this afternoon's memorial service at Ohio State University. Yesterday, Secretary of State John Kerry was among the thousands who paid their respects in a public viewing of his flag draped casket in the Ohio State House Rotunda. The former astronaut, fighter pilot, and U.S. Senator died December 8th at the age of 95. Icy roads causing accidents along much of the East Coast. One major pileup occurred on Interstate 95 in Baltimore. This is SRN News. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Travel Camp RV. Visit Travel Camp for store-wide year-end RV savings at Beach and Southside. Look for their second location on Blanding, a mile north of 295. Opening January 1st. Click TravelCamp.com. A Christmas gift of choice. Larry Gillespie, a retired Christian school psychologist, has published a book, The Coping Strategy, Choosing a Life of Wholeness in a Broken World. Broken governments. Broken economies. Broken industries. Broken communities. Broken schools. Broken churches. Broken families. Broken relationships. Broken promises. Broken dreams. Broken hearts. These are the matters that so often consume our energies and seize our day. The truths embedded in the coping strategy are universal, reflected in research-based psychology, and anchored in the wisdom of the sacred writings. Typical responses of those who have read the book and or embraced the strategy are similar to... I have based a whole series of sermons for my congregation on the strategy. I want a copy of the coping strategy. Strategy for everyone that is employed in my medical practice. I just couldn't stop reading this book. The Coping Strategy probably saved my life. The Coping Strategy is now available at Amazon.com, your neighborhood bookstore, and at CopingStrategyInternational.com. They say silence is golden, but duct tape is silver. Hey, this sale's too hot to keep silent about. Woody Folsom Ford has over 600 new Fords on the ground or on the way. And we're out to sell 300 of them by year end. Woody's dealing select new 16 expeditions at savings up to $14,000. Come on and talk to them. Truck buyers, select 16 Ford F-150 XLT Crew Cab 4x4s. Save up to $10,000. Hey, we've been dealing select. Select 16 F 350 and F450 work trucks and cabin chassis, flat beds and service bodies, saving up to ten thousand on them bad boys too. Better get to Faxi where the Ford store is rocking, rocking and rolling, folks. Talk to us and see how good it feels to get a Woody Folsom Ford deal. Or hey, ask about our zero for seventy-two offers on select models. Better get to Faxi and Woody Folsom Ford, where cars just flat cost less. Hey, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Oh, tell me. 25 years has seen a lot of changes, but one thing hasn't changed. The quality of CopyFax, a family-owned business taking pride in their service and products. CopyFax offers easy document management to store and back up all of your business files. CopyFax is the only local distributor for the Samsung product line and services the full HP printer fleet. Your choice for multifunction office management. Update and simplify today. 904-296-1600 and online at CopyFax.com. CopyFax is proud to serve our local military. Stuck in traffic? WBOB has the answer. Hey, watch out for the chair of the center lane at Butler Boulevard eastbound over there at Hodges Boulevard. And there's a crash in St. John's County State Road A1A at State Road 312 in St. Augustine. Going to be mostly sunny today. Highs near 80. A little bit of rain tonight through about the rest of the week. You're looking for a low tonight, 65 with some mostly cloudy skies. It is up to 70. Yeah, WBOB AM 600, the answer. And now let's return to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Once again, here's Tula. Welcome back, everyone. This is Tula Wooten. You're listening to Tula's Tips for Caregivers on WBOB. And my big announcement today is this is my last live radio show on WBOB, this actual physical station here in Northeast Florida. I'll be taking my radio show to a podcast format from here on out, and I'll be getting the word out through lots of social media and through my email, of course. Many of you who listen weekly are on my email list. If you're not, please email me at tulastips at gmail.com. That's T-O-U-L-A-S at gmail.com. 
or go to my website, TulaStipsForCaregivers.com, and you can message me through my website. My show is going to be made available from here on out on a couple of different digital platforms, and those platforms will automatically put my radio show on my website and on my Tulas Tips for Caregivers Facebook page. You know, at the top of the show, I really meant to thank some of the sponsors who've been with me, particularly those who've been with me since day one. Um, I could not have been doing this radio show with, for the last seven years if it weren't for them. So first of all, I really want to thank from the bottom of my heart, Elmcroft Assisted Living. You guys have been with me, supported me on this radio show since I first started it. And so many, many thanks to you, and I will continue to support you. You're a wonderful assisted living facility. Also, big thanks to Hardish Giddens, who supported me in the early days. The Agewell Institute, who's been faithful for the last several years and being a sponsor. Thank you so, so much. AARP nationally, who is currently still a sponsor. Again, I rely on AARP for so much of the research that I do on caregiving in the United States, the latest trends, the latest challenges, what's available. If you are a caregiver and you've not been to the aarp.com slash caregiver site, you owe it to yourself to go. There's a wealth of information for you there. And then there's Apex Home Health Care, who's supported me for the last couple of years, too. So thank you. Um, Joni, Chris, I've just had another caller call in it's carol odell who i'd love for you guys to meet sometime and carol i know you've got a house full of grandkids right now so i'm going to go to you first so thank you for calling in oh i just want to say thank you for on behalf of me and on behalf of hundreds and hundreds and thousands of caregivers that you've touched in every aspect of your life um you know this show it will live on through podcast, and it will continue. I continue to meet caregivers every day that need the encouragement and the information and the resources you offer. So kudos to Tula. Thank you. <laughs> You're so sweet, Carol. You've been a guest on my show many times, and we've worked together in serving caregivers and done public speaking events together and serving caregivers and as you have taken off into your passion and helping caregivers stay healthy and strong as a wellness coach i applaud you for that that took a lot of grit and determination well thank you tilla you know i've realized Mm -hmm. because i walk that caregiving road and how very difficult it is and sadly for those of us with aging parents Um, There is a time that their life will transition to what is next, and our life must continue here on Earth, and we can't bankrupt ourselves. We have to go on. We have to have a healthy body, a healthy mind, healthy relationships, personal goals, and caregiving you just give a hundred million percent to, but then you have to say, hey, where am I? And that's what you've done. You you know, many of your shows is not only information for caring for our aging parent, but information for the health and wellness of caregivers. Yep. That has really been my goal since day one, because I know the toll that it can take on you. And um, I love it that you have taken your love for caregivers and your love for health and wellness and become a wellness coach and if anybody would really like to access carol to learn how to become a little healthier themselves carol tell us how they can do that oh uh, you can contact me you know one of the easiest ways nowadays is facebook um carol d odell of course i'm up in fernandina beach that's one of the easiest ways message me um i now work with a great uh, facility stay strong fitness that really is about helping people stay strong physically and emotionally and so please reach out to me reach out to me through tula's website i'm a link on there as well it's you'll you'll catch my email there that'll be the easiest way and if i can assist you with your personal wellness goals whether it be health or losing weight or management of stress and especially sleep that's a biggie yeah. You know, or just managing, you know, your own thoughts. I think sometimes as caregivers, it's our thoughts that of worry and dread and guilt and regret that just build, and they literally paralyze every part of our body, and they don't make us better caregivers. 
No, they really don't. And they, like you said, they paralyze your own body and detract from you and your o- overall health. Um, all of those emotions detract from your overall health. And as you said, it's my goal for caregivers not to just come out at the end of their caregiving role alive. I want them to be alive and well and to be thriving. And to do that, you've got to take care of yourself while you're a caregiver. You have to plan for the ending of your caregiving role. If you're caring for a frail elder, a parent, aunt, or uncle, the goal is is for you to outlive them, right? It is. <laughs> That's my goal. And, you know, our, our, our loved ones, the healthy-minded ones, they really want us to go on and have an amazing life. I tell my adult children all the time, the best way you can honor me is to have a good life. Right. And do it in my name if you want to, or do it in spite of me. I don't <laughs> care, but go out and do amazing things with your own life. And, you know, even if your loved one isn't always as healthy-minded and, and generous with their thoughts as you'd like them to be, you have to want it for yourself. Yeah. You've got to put yourself first, and it's okay to do that. That's a big lesson, and it takes a lot of people a long time to really learn that. Um, it does. But, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. <laughs> I love it. Joni, you want so, to add to that? A, <laughs> yep. Joni, Chris, you, either of you want to add to yep. that? Because you've both walked this journey. Oh, I'll tell you what, I think she said it really a... well. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, wellness is, is such an important topic for, um, for all of us. And I want to connect with her myself. So, no, it's, uh, <laughs> we, need to put that in our, we, we need to put that in our mindset because we're so incent, intent on taking care of somebody else, we forget to take care of ourselves. I know it's, that's kind of my journey as I move forward in this vast network of caregivers. Yeah. Your caregiving role has ended, Chris, and I know that, you know, because you've told me it's taken a while for you to refocus on yourself and really be able to do that. It has, and... Um, and I'm just to the point now after two and a half years to where I, I'm crawling out of my isolation and looking at, uh, looking at my own wellness and what, uh, and what really caregiving did to me, uh, mentally and physically. But the funny thing about that is I do it again. Yeah. And, uh, and with that, the person who was telling me to take care of myself better was the one who I was taking care of. <laughs> Because he loved you. So, yeah, that's right. I mean, and uh, if, it, it does all come down to love, care, and commitment. And we have to apply that to ourselves, and sometimes we we forget about that. And the way that I always like to phrase that, Tula, um, that's a very, very important topic for a lot of caregivers is, you know, once you're past the caregiving, then turn your caregiving inward. Mm-hmm. You know, once you don't have those other people in your life for whatever reason to care for, then you can take that time to turn your caregiving in, inward and get those doctor's appointments taken yep. care of. Get all of that self-care taken care of. It's so important, and I love that phrase, turn your caregiving inward, because if you don't, you may not be around at the end of the caregiving journey. We know, because we work in this field, that and, you know, the estimates are kind of different, but the, the lowest one I've seen is that 40% of caregivers die before the person they're taking care of. That's scary to me. Anybody want to yes. comment it, it, on that? It, it is. Yes. Well, you know, too, it, it does I happen. So Go ahead, Carol. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I Sometimes I can't hear. Um, I found that a lot of times caregivers don't realize that they're fading physically or emotionally. They just ignore, ignore, ignore. And, you know, oftentimes, as you know, it's too late by the time you're going, wow, my ears are ringing, my face is red, I can't get my breath. So, you know, those things, those little hints, and how wonderful, Chris, that your care person wanted you to care for yourself. Yeah. Yes. That's a blessing. Guys, that music means we're getting ready to go into a commercial break. I know I have the three of you. Joni, I understand you may need to leave us, but if the other two can hold on a little bit longer, I would love it. You are listening to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Guys, this is a great conversation. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this sponsor break. Tula's Tips.
Tips for Caregivers is proudly sponsored by AgeWell Institute at Baptist Health, by the AARP, by Elmcroft Assisted Living and Memory Care, and by Claim Medic. Are you burdened with a loved one's medical bills and confused about who and how much to pay? Are there medical claims that have been denied? When you work with Claim Medic, they review your bills for accuracy every month and deal directly with your insurance company to make sure you receive every benefit that you pay for and never pay a bill that you don't owe. At Claim Medic, they offer free audits of up to three years of past medical bills to identify any past billing errors and recover overpayments you may have made. And their monthly bill review service will ensure that future bills are accurate before you pay. With Claim Medic as your personal medical claim specialist, you can focus on what matters most, the health and comfort of your loved one, and rest easy knowing that their medical bills are managed by experts who care. Ready to start? Call 888-988-2985 to speak with a specialist or visit ClaimMedic.com. That's 888-988-2985. With Claim Medic on your side, you'll never pay a medical bill you don't owe. Hi, everyone. This is Tula again, and I'm here to tell you about the AgeWell Institute at Baptist Health. They're located in the San Marco area. I've been taking my own parents there for about two years now. Dr. Lentz, the geriatrician on staff, has done remarkable things for both my parents and for me, the caregiver. They have great information, advice, and resources to help me. Dr. Lentz and her team of social workers, dietitians, nurses, therapists, and the pharmacist have been so instrumental in helping me keep my own parents independent and living in their own home where they want to be. If you're looking for someone to either supplement the care that your primary physician is giving to your loved one who's 65 or older, or to perhaps become their primary care physician, I really encourage you to call the Agewell Institute at Baptist. Their number is 904-202-4243. Again, that's 904-202-4243. George, I got the job. Thanks, I'm so excited. They hired me on the spot right after the interview. It was that book I bought from Amazon, From the Interview to the Paycheck by Fred Haley. The book really taught me something. It helped me to think about what the boss wants. Then it helped me with answers that show that I can do the job. I can tell they were impressed when I introduced myself. I just followed the simple outline from the interview to the paycheck book, and I know I won the job with my first 90 days plan the book recommended. They said no one else had ever been so prepared. You should get the book. It's on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle. It's worth it if you want to get hired. Just search for From the Interview to the Paycheck by Fred Haley. Do it now. Have you read the new book, Love Stories and Timeless Tips, yet? It's by our own Tula Wooten with Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Tula is a caregiver, too, as well as an expert on caregiving. You can get it in paperback or on Kindle at Amazon.com. The book is filled with touching stories of caregivers taking care of their loved ones. Each chapter has helpful ideas that we all can use. I love that Tula included a Tula's tip with each story. Her message to caregivers is clear. Take care of yourself so that you can take care of your loved one. This is a beautiful book for all caregivers to read, whether you're a part-time, full-time, or long-distance caregiver, or someone receiving care. You should get the book today. Just go to Amazon.com. Search for Love Stories and Timeless Tips by Tula Wooten. And now let's return to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Once again, here's Tula. Welcome back, everyone. This is the last segment of the show today, of my last show on WBOB. And I will tell you, I'm a little bit sad. It's kind of hard to give this up. I've been doing it for seven years now, every Saturday morning. And it's a part of who I am. But a part of who I am as a caregiver means I need to take care of myself, too. And that's part of the reason that I am pulling back and won't be doing this show live every Saturday on WBOB anymore. But I am taking my show to a digital format so that you, my listeners, can listen to me at any time. You don't have to be glued to a radio from 11 to 12 on Saturday mornings. I'll be having my show on many different um, digital platforms and it'll be on my website, ToolistipsForCaregivers.com. It'll be on my Facebook page, Tula's Tips for Caregivers, on my Facebook page. And I'm partnering with Chris and with Joni. We're going to do some things together to try and reach more caregivers as a team. Right, guys? 
Exactly. You know, it's you know what's funny about this uh, thinking about this uh, tool today is, you know, as caregiving, we can't really do this by ourselves, and we go out and advocate like we like to with our experience. We can't do that by ourselves either, and by combining our efforts and our talents, uh, God, we're just going to the people we're going to be able to reach uh, is just going to be. I guess threefold, since the three of us will be <laughs> involved in this, but uh, it's going to be fun. I, I, don't, I certainly know that, and you know, we can also do a tool as tips for caregivers app. I mean, we can people can move, where they can download the show specifically. So there's a lot of great things that are in front of us. So, you know, Chris, you're you're more, more of a techie guy than I am, but I love that idea. We're going to be talking um, offline to see how we can accomplish some of those things together. And you know, Carol, I know you're still there. We would love to have you be a part of this, too, because your component with the focus on health and well-being is so important. Think we can wrap you in, Carol? Well, I would love to be able to reach more folks in giving the message that staying well is the best way to be the most loving, present, beneficial caregiver you can be. Well put. Very good. Very good. I love her already, Tula. Well, you know, um, she doesn't live very far from me. I'm very thankful for that. We've been good friends since 2007. Um, she's just up in Fernandina. Chris, you love road road trips, so you're just going to have to get up and come <laughs> back up here, and I'll be happy to introduce you. Joni, we've been talking about me coming there for some time, but it may be that you get to head south pretty soon, and the three of us, four of us, can get together. Awesome. That That would be great. I think the the four of us combined have, like I said, a lot of different talents and skills and expertise, and we can bring a lot to the table together to help caregivers at a much larger level, um, reaching them all digitally. Um, because if we combine our efforts to do this, I really see the potential for a greater reach and more impact, and that's what we're trying to do, right? One hundred percent. There's a lot of caregivers who feel too alone, and yeah, that's they just what it's don't all need about. To, so we've got to get the message out there. You know, too alone is the word is is so well put. You know, I was reading an article last night about isolation of frail seniors in America. That breaks my heart. We have so many frail seniors who are isolated and alone, and then we know that we've got many of them who have someone who's taken care of them. And they they feel alone, and they feel like there's nobody to help them, and they don't know where to turn. And as they they isolate, they become depressed, and then therefore their health goes downhill. So, our goal is to reach them and help them not be isolated, reach out for help, and take care of themselves. And Chula, if I could add something to that, this is Joni. Uh, I was also reading last week that cancer patients. Uh, particularly, they've done a study on breast cancer patients that are alone, um, and, and this is the other side of the coin, actually have a worse prognosis mm. than the ones who have people with them caring for them. Uh, it's pretty amazing. They, they actually die more often. You know, that really just so makes caregivers sense. caregivers play a huge role. Caregivers play a huge role in the health and well-being of the person that they're taking care of. And, you know, there are studies now that show that caregivers who have support, not only do the the person that they're taking care of live longer, healthier lives, even with cancer, even with COPD or CHF, the the caree lives longer, but the caregiver also lives longer and has a healthier life. Um, And that just kind of makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It just boils down. 100%. It boils down, to, boils down to taking care of yourself. Um, somebody's got Absolutely. some wind blowing in, in their phone. So whichever of the, the three of you it is, if you could maybe um, adjust that a little bit because it's coming through on the airwaves, um, that would be helpful. You know, we're, we're, we're going to be wrapping up this show. And, um, again, I've got a little bit of sadness. I guess it's bittersweet because I know I'm doing the right thing for myself and i know i'm branching into an area where i'll actually be able to reach more caregivers but when you've been doing something as long as i've been doing this it becomes a part of your identity and so i want caregivers in northeast florida to know that i'm not going away i'm still here for you you just need to reach me on my website tulistipsforcaregivers.com 
on my Facebook page. I have my own Facebook page. It says Tula's Tips for Caregivers. You can email me at Tula's Tips at Gmail, or you can also call me at 904 904- 407-6211 again 904 407-6211 i'm still here for you my three friends chris and Joni and carol are here for you and we're going to continue to work together for the overall health and well-being and support of the caregiver as you're taking care of a loved one there's 66 million of us in the united states and many of us don't really know where to turn for help you know, one of my, my messages today is, as always been, take care of yourself. Prepare to be a caregiver. Think about what's in your future. If you've got an aging loved one or relative, you need to start reaching out and thinking about who you need to be talking to to prepare to be a caregiver. But then prepare for the end of that caregiving role. It's not going to last forever. Carol, Joni, Chris, each of you have had a caregiving role that has ended And I have to applaud each of you because you've gone on and you've taken care of yourselves. And through your caregiving role, you've become advocates for caregivers. And I I love the the specific role that each of you have played um, over the years. I got a question for for you, for each of you. And I'm going to ask Chris, you go first, and then Joni and Carol. As I'm embarking on a new venture and a new way of reaching caregivers and stopping Reaching out on on this physical station, any advice for me? Just well, continue you know, what you're doing, and it, it's a different medium. But just continue with your message. All right, thank you. I love that, Joni. Well, you know what I think right now, Tula, is I think you're truly doing this uh, to help your parents. I think they're a big part of it too. And, you know, obviously, you know, we get into these stages in our life where we feel like, I always call it the deer in the headlights look, okay, where we've got just so much stuff going on, we don't know which way to turn. And and I kind of feel that maybe this is where you've probably been. Yeah. So, you know, enjoy the time with your parents. Trust me, I've lost both of mine. I know how precious, how precious each and every moment is uh regardless of the circumstance even the saddest christmas of my life with my mother her last christmas was very very special and precious um you know but you know take this time and you're always going to be able to come back and reconnect and you know look at this as an opportunity to take care of you and Fred and your parents, and certainly you'll always be and have at your core the love of caregiving advocacy. Thank you, Joni. That was so sweet. I really do appreciate that advice. Carol, you got about 30 to 40 seconds to give me some advice. Okay, I've got two quick questions for you, Tula. Okay. First, how do you feel about endings? Oh, they can be tough, but this one is bittersweet. There's also relief with this one. Okay, and how do you feel about beginnings? Love new beginnings. Love them. How do you get to, my third question, how do you get to a beginning? You got to usually stop something so you can start something new, right? That's right. So this this is a sweet ending and this is an exciting beginning. Thank you, Carol. Well put. Great advice. This is a new beginning. I feel energized after talking to the three of you. Thank you for your advice, for your well wishes. And for those of you who have been listening to me for years, I wish you the greatest blessings. Take care of yourself. I love you.